holy and good God in heaven, blessed Lord, thank you for your only begotten Son, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. And thank you in a special way for gathering us together, Lord, to consider your word. We are praying that, Lord, as you take us through what has been, we may learn what we must be today. We are so thankful that you are speaking to us in the still small voice. And we are hearing what it is that you're saying to us, and we are repenting to ashes and dust. And just accept us, Lord. Let our hearts be broken as we hear our sins being rebuked. And let these lessons, Lord, be forever bound in our hearts. This is our prayer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, we've just done a shift again, and yeah, uh, I'm trying to do that just in case uh, there's an emergency in the course of the day, I have to handle it, but uh, uh, the other lesson we have at school will be coming later. I, I know that that's a very important uh, lesson, and all of us need to, need to attend, uh, the, especially the lesson on, uh, on Sabbath school. Because I know that many of our churches, because I, I've been able to uh, visit many of our churches, no Sabbath school. So that, that's, that's something that's really important because it's, Ellen White calls it the backbone of the church. All right? So please uh, find time <coughs> to attend the Sabbath school lesson study. But now, <coughs> I'll go through uh, a lesson on the camp meetings. <coughs> and I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to. I don't know if I can share a screen for that. We'll be reading just a couple of SAP quotes. Eh? <coughs> okay. So uh <coughs> Yeah. So we just be reading together to see what the Lord has been saying. So I don't want to say much about uh, about this, but basically by reading what the Lord has said, we might be able to make decisions and it might be able to help us to know what we are doing because of tradition, what we are doing because of the word of God. The word of God ideally should be our tradition. So we are looking at that and we are seeing that the first camp meeting of Southern day Adventists that was held in 1868 on the farm of E.H. Wood in Wright, Michigan, United States. And that camp meeting is what I have down there. So, so this dear pioneers um, or early Adventist pioneers uh the gather and there's a camp meeting session that's going on you can see young children uh sitting down you can be able to see elderly people are gathering there the huge tent there and it's interesting uh they are spending time there they're praying they are, they are fellowshiping together they're studying the word of god together this just a brief picture to help us understand what was going on there. <clears throat> and of course, you can get more and more pictures. Uh, that's some water for drinking. I think that's some water I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that if you need water, you can get it from uh, behind there, right? So, um, basically, that's what it looks like. So uh, that image is able to paint a lot of things in our minds and so on, so that as we continue to read a few more things, we may be able to see what the Lord is saying. All right, so um, this is a very interesting quote, and we have read it before uh, in um, extra early experiences of uh, Sister Y. Um, so I'm from, uh, it says, I saw that 
this door that the enemy the enemy comes in at to perplex and trouble the floor can't be shut. What's that? I inquired of the angel how the door could be done. Well. He closed. And then she said, the church must flee to what? Not creeds, my friend. The church must flee back to God's dear word and become established upon the gospel order that has been overlooked and neglected. Where do we find that gospel order? We find it in the word of God, right? And so we are told that we are told that uh, that gospel order has been neglected, and this is indispensably necessary to bring the church into unity of what? In faith. That if we come to the unity of faith that is spoken of in Ephesians chapter 4, then we must flee to gospel order. Thank you so much, your brother. God bless you. So that's Christian experiences and views of N and G Y. All right. Let's see what the Lord continues to say in letter 215B, 1889. See what the Lord says. Letter 215B, 1889. We are basically discussing, having an interaction over the subject of the camp meetings. And we are going to see what the Lord says about that. All right. It says, the Lord has plainly, how? Has plainly stated what Seventh-day Adventists are to the Lord has plainly say to us what we are to do, all right? Camp meetings are to be appointed and a series of tent meetings are to be what? Yeah. Hell. Uh, I mean, I want us to understand what the Lord has plainly stated. Camp meetings are to be appointed and a series of meetings are to be held. And we'll understand how and what, what are they. You need to understand all who can should work in connection with the what? Come meetings. And we'll understand why a greater work is not being done. The church has been organized for mission, or the church is to be organized for mission. And we have been called to do the work of God. But why is this work not being accomplished as fast as it should be? There should be no hesitancy in preaching the truth applicable for this time. A decided testimony, we are told, is to be born. The discourse given should be simple that children can do what? Well. You know, I, I think we fail to put a very important subject here. And it's child, which is the subject of children ministry is one of the most important yet neglected subject in every reform movement. I mean, you go to many churches and you realize that people are busy with every truth apart from the children. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know, sometimes you have to put aside our devotional program and we say, we just want to read simple stories from the Bible with a child. In many of our homes, we don't care about our children. We don't care about our children in the church. Yes, it's the white says in the calm meaning, a series of discourses should be done that uh, should be uh, simple discourses should be given that even children can understand. That is why if we are organizing a good camp meeting, we should have a program for the children, a full children program. That's what Sister Puruchara was trying to uh, do in uh, uh, when we were uh, in M to introduce a full children's program. It should be organized. Materials should be availed so that the children, because the children are the future of the church today. You know, many of us don't even see that if we do not train the children, then it means that this movement ends with us. Mm -hmm. We can't see it. So there's a lot of craze about uh, present truth, but present truth includes bringing up children who can defend the faith. Okay, so we are told, and I'll continue reading because this is uh, letter 86, 1903. Letter 86, 1903, listen carefully to what she says. Brethren, I exhort you to read again and again what is written in the testimonies regarding our camp meeting what? Work. So we have to read again and again. Then we are told, read it with a determination to understand the instructions given and to carry it into effect. So understand what is given there and carry that instruction into effect. And then we are told 
I urge you to realize the importance of reading the direction that the Lord had given and uh, given us that we may carry forward his work from the lines that he has done work. Marked up. Let us hold our camp meetings near some important near some of the important cities in a retired place. Now that's a very important point. Let us hold our camp meetings, and we'll come back to that point later. In um, near some cities in a retired place, yet not so far away from the people, uh, away that the people will not do what well, attend. We are to all these meetings where we can reach those who are perishing in sin. So there are two extremes which must be avoided. We must avoid this extreme of going into the center of a market, a very busy market, loud, everyone ruffles all this thing, put a cup meeting there. I can also avoid the cases of, because I was you know, in, in, in one of the countries, um, uh, uh, and, and they say, no, no we, we're not going to hold any meeting close to any city. You say, but no, 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 that's not what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying not in rowdy, overcrowded places, but at the same time, not in places where the people from those areas cannot access the meeting. There should be a balance, and we'll be able to see that in a little while. Okay. From Elder Santis letter, I learned that it has been proposed to hold your next camp meeting where? Your next camp meeting um, at uh, Fernando. And you are told, no doubt, this would be a convenience to those living near the school and to those families who wish to place their children in the school. But then she says, but our camp meetings ought not to be planned with a view to meeting the conveniences of a few work families, but with a view to warn the world and converting souls to truth. So when leaders sit down and, uh, to decide, or when the church sits down to decide where to hold the camp meetings, they must look at the main important objective is warning the world and converting the souls to their truth. That's the, that's the main thing. That's the main thing. Okay, the Church of Christ was organized for what? Missionary power. Let's not forget this. It's not for position and power, right? It's for missionary what? Purposes. That's what we told. The Church of God was organized for missionary purposes. Our camp meetings are, listen carefully now, among the most important agencies in our work for fulfilling this purpose. Now the question should be asked, if this is among the most important agencies of our work in fulfilling this purpose, then how can we as a movement, or God's people all over the world as a movement, fail to have many of these meetings and at the same time seek to accomplish the great work? You see where we, things don't add up? Yes, exactly. If this is one of the most important agencies of fulfilling the purpose of the three angels' messages going to all the world, or the church being organized for mission purposes, then the question is, how can we, while neglecting these gatherings, do that work of finishing, or rather, of, of being organized for mission purposes? Listen carefully to what she says. Through them, we may reach many with the gospel message. The Lord has instructed us that they are most what effective agencies for doing this work. That's the camp meetings. Most effective agencies for doing this work. Let me tell you, I wish that all of us were here, brethren, that crusades are not the most effective. I'm not saying that you don't need to do open meetings. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm telling you they are not the most effective. The most effective that they found out were tent meetings and come meetings. That after ministering to the people, you could go and talk to them, greet them, spend time with them. Uh, that, that's not what happens when you start in a market and do all these things. That you don't even know who listens to you. All right? 
You fall an intimate hour. Oh, who has come in? Why are you come? Who are troubles? You pray with the people. You are not just about, all right, you're talking about the beast and you want to show you that the Sunday law is coming and all these things. No, that's okay. But you have an interaction with your word. <laughs> One minister said, said and I love it, E. Cleveland, he said, to preach, everyone can preach. But to win souls, you must step out of the pulpit and go to the fireplace and interact with the souls. You understand? Step out of the pulpit, and that's why when there is a 10 meeting, the camp meeting, so all these people are sitting down and you're going and interacting with them, all right? If they can tell you why they're here, all they come, what, what's going on in their lives, and so on. You can spend time to answer their questions. They can tell you the ideas. You tell them what, or what you're feeling about. When the Bible says you have a healthy interaction. But you know, as a minister, I've been going all around in many places holding revelation with Daniel and uh, uh, Daniel seminars or prophecies. In place to place to place in many countries, you know, what you came out with is if you don't have a meeting where you are so organized and you have your congregation seated listening to you, you might end up seeing a big congregation which is not actually a congregation. They are moral by guys, they just talked over, and another person picked them. But that does not mean that that ministry should be done work. You understand what you say? That ministry should not be neglected. It's a good ministry, but it's not the most work. And especially that's why we are told if we are doing such a ministry, what should we be having? Books. You get it? If you're doing a ministry where you don't have the people all the time, you give them a minister that they can stay with for? You understand what I'm talking about now? Because, that's, because now you understand that this person may not listen to me for the whole presentation. Perhaps he was doing this and doing that, right? And a customer comes and interrupts. You understand what I'm talking about? But then if you give the minister, the, the, the silent minister, the person can go home and stay. You understand? So that's why we should be able to be wise people as we're working. So we don't want to take the two extremes and say, no, 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 you don't do this, no. But we have to do it wise. But we don't have to neglect also what the Lord says is the most effective agency. All right? Amen? That's, that's, that's the balance I want us to bring so that it doesn't come out really like, hey, brother, that brother is saying that they should not be done, that all, you only have come meeting except you have man. No, that's what we say. Business matters, we are told, should be attended to by those especially appointed for this work. And so far as possible, they should be brought before the people at some other time than the camp meetings. Instructions in conversing. Instructions in Sabbath school. One. And in the details of tract and missionary work should be given in the home churches or in meetings especially appointed. So there should be meetings especially appointed for instructions of Sabbath school. You see how great a work we have to do, my friend. Instructions in Sabbath school, instruction in tracts, canvassing work, missionary work. These are to be done in our own churches, our local churches, in our S uh, special meetings that we've organized for this. But we are told the same principle applies to cooking schools, all right? If you want a cooking school, then uh, especially in the home churches or in, um, um, or rather in home churches or in special meetings organized for that. While these are right in their place, they should not occupy the time of the camp meeting. So it's not what to occupy the larger time of the coming. They are good, but then they are not to occupy the larger time of the work. They come in. So that this, this is where we all get it wrong because you, you realize that the camp meeting is crowded with a lot of um, uh, uh, can, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sabbath school work, education. You see this program. I don't know whether you people have seen this program that you're normally forming. Uh, it's, it's a little bit off the, 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 the main blueprint. And uh, it's important to have, have the balance of what God is saying. I hope you understand. 
So it says the presidents of the conferences and the ministers should give themselves to the spiritual interests of the people and should therefore be excused from the mechanical labor attended upon by the committee. The minister should be ready to act as teachers and leaders in the work of the camp when needed, but they should not be wearied out. They should feel refreshed, be in a cheerful frame of mind, for this is essential for the best good of the meeting. They should be able to speak words of cheer and courage and to drop seeds of spiritual truth into the soil of honest acts to spring up and bear precious fruit. No meetings uh, is to be held in the same locality over and over again. Let's talk about that. And meetings to be held in the same locality over and over what? Okay. <clears throat> again. Because this is where we've gone wrong as a people. This might not be, you know, for those who are watching on like this might not be in your countries. This might not be in the Western countries as it is down here. But right now, the main project that our churches are doing is the project of building a camp meeting shop. Now, it might not be down there, Elder Kimaru, but it's the issue are right here, where we are right now. That is the main agenda. Who has the best word? Campsite. And let me tell you, campsites are being built in this conference. I wonder whether the leaders have even a leaflet of the spirit of process. There's one day a pastor stood while I was in a meeting and he said, in the last day of the camp, he said, the Lord spoke to me at night. He said, wow. Man, I want to hear what the Lord said to this man. And then he said, I want all the elders to come in front of me. The elders came. All employed people to come in front of me. All of them he said, he said, I don't know, all what came in front of me. They came. And the guy said, the Lord told me that even if I don't preach this Sabbath, that he needs a camp meeting site to be built here, a permanent, beautiful structure. And I said, no, 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 no. That's not the Lord. I wish because it's not in the spirit of prophecy. Either the guy is imagining, or oh, the devil is speaking to our brother. Now listen, we shall encourage a camp meeting being held in Geelong next camp meeting season, as well as a camp meeting being held in Ballarat. But we are told there should be camp meetings as well in Malmo, near the center. We must not continue in the same locality over and over again. There is in these cities a little world which must be worn point by point and fasting just as fast as possible for the work to be done will not admit delays. So we are told that these communities are going to be held in the same world. We call it. If you go to our cities like Nairobi, they are held in the same church every year after year. For the past 10 years, people have been gathering there. And we are not seeing the blessings that come with this meeting. And so we are told, I was sorry to hear that the camp meeting was to be held at Napier. Why is it not held in a new place? So the idea was that all the camp meeting in a new place. They say, why was it not held at, at, uh, at, at Christ Church? Our camp meeting should go into new places. Let new class have the privilege of hearing their truth. Nothing calls them out like a word. Praise the Lord. And then he says, our own churches are not the ones alone to be benefited. All right? It's not for our own churches alone to be benefited. These are avenues for reaching out to more, to more souls. So I'm already glad that there are churches that already say, just share with me a brother, we are planning for a camp meeting this year. And I say, praise the Lord, just study the testimonies and know what the testimony says about camp meetings and follow what the testimonies say. That, that, will, that will benefit you people a lot. You know, we must begin doing things differently. Not differently to be weird, but rather differently from the tradition that the world has said, but rather in the Bible tradition. The Bible tradition, that's okay. It's the Bible being our creed. Says every effort possible should be made to reach classes that have never had. Let us seek for what? 
And this was not published, my friend. We're asking not until 2015, and we're asking why. So let's let's continue. And that's why many of us have messed up with all the income meetings in the same locality for the past 20 or like let me see. I don't know since I was born, I've never seen a local church over here. Um I come meeting in any other place apart from the church compound. Over 20 years. All right. This can be done when the prejudice is removed by our come meetings. And for this reason, come meetings should be held in a new locality and not less than two or four what? Personal labor being mingled with the camp meeting efforts. You understand that? Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord is counseling us as the most effective one. The most effective way. And you might not like it because it's consuming our time. <laughs> you know, how long will we stay there? Maybe we're talking about two weeks to four weeks. That's a man. <laughs> Yeah, but a man, that's not too much for the Lord. <laughs> and so, uh, sorry for that. I, I, I think I'll just continue. Uh, uh, I'll be reading and I could give you this note uh, later on. And you should give me this. Later on, see, I don't want to be able to stay. Oh, I see, but I have very little time. Um, let's just continue. Maybe I'll just be reading the quotes so that you know where the quotes are, so that you can also write, but I can also share the notes there. Okay. I'm told I know it would be much better, we're continuing, to have the camp meetings in a new locality, but if the way seems to be ate up, you cannot do less than look at the ground where the meeting was held three years ago. So you understand what Sister White is trying to say. Sister White was very balanced in her views. I believe that she was being guided by the Lord. She was not in this extreme or in that extreme, but she was trying to say that if there is need, in a some, some area, then maybe after a few years, you can go back there and still do the work there. So what she's saying is if we did the work here, we cannot say we can never again do the work here. Now that's not what she's saying. But she's saying after some years, we can still, if there is need, if you realize that people are still in need of the gospel there, then you can still plant a camp meeting in that area and be able to do what? Reach out to the people there. So I think that's what she's saying. The Lord will open this way. We shall see his hand guiding and directing us where to hold our camp meetings. So who is to direct and guide us where to hold our camp meetings? It's the Lord. We are to pray about it. We are to ask God, which city or which place would you want us to go and do what? And do our camp meeting this side. Do you know that you can come all the way, brother, brother, brother John, all the way from um from mount kenya region and come and do a camp meeting in mount elmo <laughs> you say no what are you saying but yes that's possible if the lord does what shows you that there is a need there all right if the lord shows you that there's a need there okay camp meetings have follow-ups <laughs> they have what follow-ups this is from the little book um uh this is letter 83a 1898 83a 1898 that they have follow-ups listen carefully but i will go no further i want to do my best for the master whenever i am but camp meetings must be followed up and this will cost something, amen? 
Church members, we are living here, we must know that there must be sacrifice for the work of Ruth. And it begins with you. Amen? It's not the church members that it begins with. It begins with you who has the burden for the work of God. It's the first person who must be willing to sacrifice for the work of who? Of God. No camp meeting should be held and then left as teachers dropped. We need in every such effort to have sufficient means for the after work. So we must plan to leave a minister, a Bible worker, a gospel worker in the place where we've done the camp meeting to follow up on those who are influenced by the gospel. Ideally, it's like a church should be planted where a can meeting is held. You understand that? Yeah. Which must be done to bind off the work of the camp meeting, and the people may not have, uh, so that the people might not have heard the message in vain. After the camp meeting is over, ministers should be left to follow up the work with those who can be educated to give Bible readings and train as missionary workers. Are you getting it? Those who have been trained as missionary workers, Bible workers, ministers, some people should be found and the church should be willing to support that course and to support those ministers to remain there and take care of that flock. This heat and run thing. About to find one week, run. <laughs> two weeks, run. Do all these things. This is something that <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I have tried to follow up on some places which you went to as a university. And I was sharing with some of you yesterday. That I know of no university that spent money in missions like our university. There no university, as far as I know. But I'll tell you the truth. I have done a personal survey. If they are listening online, they might hear. And go and confirm the word, the survey. That many of the people who are there baptized are no longer in the church. They are not there. I went to a place where the elder told me, you guys baptized over 100 years. None of them is I'm here with my wife. And it had not even taken two years. And they had spent 800,000 that mission. It's a place where we baptized 236. At the end of the meeting, the people didn't have Bibles. But the church decided to buy fish so that the students could enjoy at the end of the mission. The people did that one. And I protested. You know, no. Understand what's going on? And today I asked one of my friends there because I, I was planning to do a mission there. It's a very good area. And I asked one of my friends there, do you know this place? Do you know this place? Do you know this place? Do you know sadly that like where I was preaching, in the side I was preaching, there were about 48 people that had actually been baptized. And so when we left that place, and uh, we said that these people, 48, that's a big number. They don't need to struggle going into a main church. I mean, let's start our congregation for them. And so the church has to be start a congregation for, but sadly enough, there's no congregation. So what has happened? And with those 236, 1.6 million was gone, and there is nothing. But numbers went to the world, to the conference, isn't it? You are ranked as a very evangelistic group. The pastor is promoted, isn't it? <laughs> but where are the souls? Where are the souls is the question. This work requires a treasury enriched by tithe and by gifts and offerings. 
Now, <clears throat> we've looked at that. Let's look at another point in uh, the little book, um, letter, or letter 38, 1889. I talked about this, but I'll just mention it again in our come meetings. There should be children's meeting. Children's what? Meeting. Most honest work should be done in a camp meeting for, from the commencement to the close. There should be those who can conduct children's meetings. And we are told in our camp meetings in Newcastle, Sister Pet took up this work with several interested workers under a direction. These camp meetings were continued all through the camp meetings and are still being held. And do you know what? We should actually be having a group of children's teachers, ministers who are going to minister children, as it's not something of an afterthought. It's not an afterthought. It's something that ministers should sit down and understand that we need three teachers who are going to be, and just as important as you consider teachers for the adults, you must consider teachers of the work. Children. And it's not about that you must understand what are our children to learn this week. Children, because they are all some of the best missionaries, they will go out and bring other children and the gospel will continue to go out. All right, that is beautiful. Now there's another thing that we want to talk about in our camp meetings that have been neglected both in our camp meetings and even in, in reformed camp meetings, we'll be able to see it. Group studies. Group studies. 687 program one. 6087 paragraph one. Listen carefully. Uh, 6087 paragraph one. Yeah. At our camp meetings, one or two laborers should not be required to do all the preaching and all the teachings in Bible lines. At times, greater good can be accomplished by breaking up the large congregation into sections thus the educator in the bible truth can come closer to the people than in a large assembly so what happens is in the timetabling of the work we are told that we should have times when actually the church or the group can be divided all right so that there is a meeting uh, uh the teachers can congregate rather uh, gather as little segments different ministers with different little groups all right so there will be interaction closer interaction especially if the if the camp is big all right you know this is, this is not a bigger group if the camp is big and you want to know and be able to interact with everyone who has come to listen to god's word you understand and they are also able to express their views and ideas on certain subjects. You might need to slot times where you have group work. Because there are specific subjects that will be studied in groups. So it's not only the minister, but the congregation also interacting with the work, with the ministers. It will break up the idea that the, the ministers are for the pulpit and you are back there. And so when I walk from the pulpit, what happens? You just escort me to the to the uh, I mean the visitors hall. Yes. There's a time that I'm a man. I needed salvation like never before. Never desired salvation. And I was in a car meeting and I felt that the power of God was moving. I say, like that man said, you want to see Jesus? I want to see that teaching. But when I look at the church. How I could walk to see that preacher was almost an impossibility. When I looked at the pulpit, when I looked at the congregation, when I looked at the dress of men, I was scared. So I detoured while they were praying. Because as we were just on the screen, we were watching the screen from outside. We were not in the church. But I said, I want to see that man because he had talked about missionary commitment and I was making that decision. And I said, I want to see the what? The preacher. But the preacher was not from Kenya. So it's not like when we are interacting here, we just allow the preacher to loiter around. The earth. No, no, no. The moment they finished the message, as he was praying, I tiptoed to the pulpit. 
And when they left, I followed them. And when I reached where they were praying, I was told, no, 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 you cannot preach to the speak to the, to the minister. You can only speak to the elder. I said, by the elder, I mean, I had the message from this man. And I think he was preaching. I want to talk with him. I want him to pray with him. I want something. It's not the elder. They said, if you don't want to talk with the elders, we have the local church pastor. And the pastor told me, what's the problem, young man? So you cannot see the minister right now. I said, but why? And the minister speak, I don't have a controversial issue. The message has touched me. And I want to share something with the minister. I'm telling you a real life story. It's happened in my life. And then they told me, young man, come to the pastor's office. So I went to the pastor's office. The elder sat down with everything. I told them, that man, the minister, and my, I, in my heart, I was being convinced that this is the time to follow what that man was saying. And you might not be in the right position to answer because you are also in the congregation listening. I want to speak to the man whom the God, the Lord gave that message. They said, no, it's impossible. And they refused and refused and refused. And when I insisted, they told me, young man, we are going to pray for you with the elder. I didn't see the preacher. I say, if I am ever a minister, I will not want to be controlled by anyone. I want to interact and touch the hands of the people I'm ministering to. I don't want this class. I don't want this thing that the church has put, I don't know, guest speaker, I don't know what. I want to know because when I'm ministering to you, the greatest ministry is to come closer to you. That if a man has had the message of truth, I would be glad if I can talk with him. But our meetings have put barriers. There are people who are even more than presidents, respected. I was very sad, but it was the truth. It was a truth. Okay, so children, uh, there should be groups, and these groups will actually break this idea of different classes of people, ministers, inside. Because every minister will be going to every other group, interacting with them. We can, of course, exchange in the next study and interact with them. And so a closer interaction, oh, what's your name, my brother? Oh, I'm Brother Deacon, so that's beautiful. All right, so uh, you want an idea about that subject? Yeah, I have an idea. All right, but this is what the scripture says, and as you interact maybe for one hour or so, one hour, 30 minutes, or two hours, it will be beautiful. At the end of the day, they know you, you know them, and you have studied the Bible at a closer level, not just standing from the pulpit. This is the experience people are missing, but you know what? Jesus had that experience. Jesus was not the kind of minister that we are today. The disciples, they were not the kind of ministers that we have today. All right? <clears throat> they were not like that. Okay. Now, these meetings are to be held not in the cities, but we are also told in close proximity to the city. So let's see how that balances out. Not in the city, <clears throat> in the middle of the city, I mean a chaotic city, but at the, at the same time in close proximity, all right? But remember, the Lord will guide you, isn't it? So we must pray because there are sometimes that there are people who we must only reach by going where they are. And so we must be able to balance out and we pray more to hear the voice of God. That does not mean we however regard, disregard the counsels that he's giving us, all right? That's why we started those counsels. So let's look at this uh, little uh, beautiful letter, letter 86, 1903, which of course will be... Uh, Brethren, uh, I exhort you again to read the testimonies uh, of our camp meeting work. Read it with determination to understand the instructions given and to carry it into effect. I urge you to realize the importance of reading the directions that the Lord has given us, that we may carry forward, uh, 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 forward his work and the lines that the Lord has given us. And we are told, 
Let us hold camp meetings near some of the important cities in a retired place, yet not far away from the, where the people will not attend. So it should, should be not far away where the people cannot be able to read. We are to all these meetings where we can reach those who are perishing in sin. All right, the camp meetings should be po of positive impression upon the community. If you are holding it, it should have a positive impression upon the community. Letter 152, 1908 says this. This is the first camp meeting that has been letter 152, 1908, for those who are writing. This is the first camp meeting that has been held in Lodi, and the impression made upon the community was good. All right? So it should leave a thorough impression. If need be, we should even reach out to feed some people within the community who are in need. All right? As a form of expressing love, charity, and fulfilling Isaiah chapter 58. We have a larger message, a bigger message than that. The third angel's message is good. The camp meetings have said are means of organizing and planting new churches. We are told in uh, letter 56, 1895, we are told, we are told this, some will say that the camp meetings are very expensive and that the conference cannot afford to support another such meeting. But when we look at the three meetings, uh, the three churches that have been organized and prospering in faith, Can we hesitate in answering the question we lead pay? So how are these three churches organized and planted in, in, in the faith? Come meaning. So you, you see a broader meaning of the come meetings and says, shall we not raise our voices in decided affirmation? It will pay. So the come meetings will pay. We might use a lot of money, but it will in establishing people in the truth. So that's something to consider. Cup meetings, of course, are for soul winning. There's something that, by the way, has been has been thrown aside. People have said cup meetings are out. That's the idea that is going on around. Huh? Then the other meetings are for them, isn't it? Yes. But listen to what she says. I um, let us this. <laughs> Letter 25, 1901, she says, a cab meeting is now in progress in Napia, New Zealand. But none of our working force can be spared from this place. They must work here. With all ability God has given them, we ask the Lord for no less than a hundred souls as the result of the camp meeting and the work, the after work, now being done. So they are doing a camp meeting and they are asking for a hundred souls, no less than. Is that what we do? Camp meeting is ours. So we don't need to invite other people. These are the meetings where you can invite your relatives, you can invite your friends who have not believed, you can invite your workmates, can invite all these things, even if the church can prepare invitation cards for these meetings and flyers for these meetings. Let something be done to agitate the community around so that they can feel free to attend, especially. It is not always best, uh, for the sake of recording, let me give you the page. Yeah, that's the same book down there. It's not always best when arranging for camp meetings to hold it in a long way from where the camp meeting was held the year before, if it is held near those who are not converted at the previous meeting, maybe, or maybe at this. So what she's saying is, we can decide so that when we are holding the camp meetings in almost the same locality, it's not very far away from where it was held last time, so that those who did not receive the old message here can be able to come and attend. Now that's, that's what, and that's why I say that two extremes must be done more, must be avoided. We must pray as we make these decisions on what? On locality of where to hold the camp meetings. I'm thankful for that. Okay. Uh, 
manuscript, same as seven, 1901. Oh, it's back. Oh, praise the Lord. It is a loss to repeatedly hold come meanings in one place. So that's what she said. For this reason, we should make every exertion to keep up our calm meetings and hold them in different places in America in order to save expenses. Calm meetings have been held year after year in the same place. The cities which ought to have had the light have been deprived of the opportunity to hear the last message of mass. This is an economy which means loss in the world. I, I mean, you know that what we are doing is a loss. This is a loss. And that's what God is saying to us. Let's continue. Again. At these camp meetings, no man carried the burden of deciding who should speak, but those who are chosen who are experienced in the message and in conducting camp meetings. Important. And that's what we talked about yesterday in regard to uh, we should know who are the people going to. Pastor Tom is not here, but you are interacting with well, all of things. Where someone came. And I come in and say, can I be a speaker in your camp meeting? It was already a camp meeting time. And the person finally found way to the world, to the pulpit, and spoke. And it brought now a lot of confusion. I was interacting with me, of course, and Sophia Brass said, this happened and this happened, it has been a heavy time. You understand? But you see, the problem is, the person came, so and it um uh, and it didn't take like uh a day to know the person the person was or rather the person has not spoken in the church and so on the person was needing already a pulpit all right and the person was given a pulpit to preach in a cup meeting and then there are a lot of controversies now later on and that so there should be experience in this that's why we are we want to know who is experienced in teaching this message? You understand? Is experienced in teaching this message? So we going around preaching this message and so on. So we are told, come meetings, no man uh, is to carry, uh, carry the burden of deciding who should speak, but those who are chosen who are experienced in the message and in conducting camp meetings. We use, we use then the very arguments that are now given why the young men should not be brought to the front while the age workers are passed by. The reason here is in terms of the experience of the age workers. You understand? The experience that they are should, and that's why Pastor Allen was saying that he could be old, but that does not mean that he cannot be used of God. So that's what is really happening. But that does not mean that the young cannot be done more. We talked about Timothy which was given the gift, and that Paul had approved that Timothy was a faithful minister, isn't it? So we should be able to see that the, 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 the two elements so that we avoid uh, both sides and walk in the straight path. Uh, let's continue. God speaks through the men who understand the guiding of the Holy Spirit. When thousands come out to attend our camp meetings, they decide to get the greatest possible benefit. And it is a poor policy to place our speakers men who are not fully adapted to meet the needs of the world, of the situation. Yeah. So you have to know who are the people who are going to speak. Are they adapted to meet the needs of the situation? The word should be spoken by men who have felt the deep moving of the Holy Spirit upon their hearts and who feel the burden of the message that God has given them for the people. The old soldiers of the cross are not to be passed by. Now, when men who have been <coughs> placed in the office for the first time and who are just gaining their experience need to move carefully and in humility of mind, for often they are not able to judge wisely. When Elder Reza uh, was placed in a position of responsibility, he did not see his need to learn all that he could from the experience of others who had a knowledge of the history of the work in South California and who had burdens laid upon them for the work by the Lord. At first, assuming of his new responsibility, Elder Reza should have considered that these persons understood the situation better than he did. 
by his officious altitude, he has made the work much more perplexing than it otherwise would have been. If he will be taught, the Lord will teach Elder Risa that he has men on the ground who are fully capable, yeah, much more capable of planning and devising for the interest of the work as himself. Another thing that we need to learn in our camp meetings is there is need of music, all right? Music. We learned about all these things when we were doing the brief uh, preface of the New Testament gospel order. In our camp meeting services, there should be singing and instrumental, of course, well played, amen? Musical instrument, not if you don't have, of course. Not if you don't have, all right? <laughs> Musical instruments were used in the religious services in the ancient world times. The worshippers praised God upon the harp and the cymbal. Music should have its place in our services. It will add the interest. And every day, a praise meeting, a what? Now it's not a praise in worship either. You and raise their hands and do all these lazy things. But we want the holistic thing as the Lord says. It says every day a praise meeting should be held, a simple service of thanksgiving to God. That is just what it's called a praise. A simple service of thanks. It's not all this singing and hypnotism and uh, demon possession aspect and falling down. You understand what I'm talking about? It's a simple thanksgiving son all right uh there should be much more power in our camp meetings if we add a true sense of the goodness and the mercy and the long suffering of god and if more praise went forth from our lips to the honor and the glory of his name we need to cultivate more favor of soul the lord says who so offers praise glorify me so there should be praise, a simple thanksgiving. Thank God for life. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for his descent. Thank God for protection, for help. For all those things, just spend a short time having people thank God. And then you can have a thanksgiving. <coughs> oh, pray. Then medical mission and work. <coughs> At the camp meeting, instructions on health topics should be given to the at our meetings in Australia, lectures on that subject were given daily, and a deep interest was aroused. Attend for the use of physicians and nurses was on the medical advice was given freely and was sought by many. Thousands of the people attended the lectures, and at the close of the camp meeting, the people were not satisfied to let the matter drop with what they had already learned. In several cities where camp meetings were held, some of the leading citizens had that a branch sanitarium be established, they promised their cooperation. So you can be able to see how we can be able to do that great work, but in a short time, using what the Lord has said. That was CD 443. At our camp meetings especially, there should be daily classes for Bible study. I hope you are noting all these things, brethren, because I, I'm also learning just like you're learning, all right? Instruction should be given on the subjects of faith and Christian world. You heard Brother Daniel showing us a Christian experience that he went through. That sometimes we think we must just, you, even our testimony of how the Lord has led us just a beautiful experience that we need to show people. Christian experiences, these are testimonies should be given in camp meetings, amen? Even in these meetings, we should share testimonies of all the Lord has done what? I mean, this will encourage some of us who are almost giving up, isn't it? Yes, if we hear a testimony like one our brother shared yesterday, or I went through a difficult time almost taking off his life, and we think about it, and you are in a desperate situation, you feel like giving up, you will be encouraged. Say, God, I can, I can hold your hand, I can rise again, I can follow you. I can work for you. So testimonies will be of earnest prayers. Seasons of earnest prayer should be done one. Spend time praying. And then it says, then the influence of our camp meetings would not be of so transitory 
her character, but would be leaving an abiding impression in the lives of the people. What's the camp meeting that? Let's, let's wind this in the camp meeting that. This is a real issue. Because down here, I don't know about your places, it is measured by ties and ovens, it's measured by food, it's measured by so let's see. Nothing should be taken to the camp meeting except the most helpful, cooked in simple manner, free from all spices and grease. All right? All right, so let's continue to see what this could mean. We should put forth great efforts to teach the people the truth of health reform. At every word, camp meeting, an effort should be made to demonstrate what can be done in providing an appetizing, wholesome diet from grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. So when I come, give me some appetizing thing. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want good food, amen? Yeah. So we are not fanatics when you are saying health reform. We are talking about quality good food, amen? Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to eat sweet things. Yeah. Appetizing what? Food. So I am putting that quote there and I'm boiling it so that someone will say, you are simply talking about some poorly cooked food. No, 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 the call that God has given us is higher than the highest human mind can do what? On reach. It's a high calling. Cooking lessons are vital, very important. It's a great class. It's a great lesson. I love anyone who loves cooking because I know that my health depends on what that person presents in the table. You understand? And so that's, that's a very important thing. There it says in every place where new companies are brought into the truth, instruction should be given in the science of preparing wholesome. Workers should be chosen who can labor from house to house in an educational campaign. It's a great level. All right, let's continue. I have been shown that some of our camp meetings are far from being what the Lord designed they should. Let's read. says, there is also much time spent in what? Have you seen this thing? Yes. You people have not seen it, man. Much time spent. I went to a camp meeting. You know, I, I was, I, there's a time that they were allowing me to go about. I went to a camp meeting, raised a lot of the guest speaker there. And... I said to the women, I know that I, I, I came here to preach. You are spending more time in the kitchen. The elders, the coming leaders, they are not here. Now, all the people who are here, all of them are guests. Who are we ministering to? Now, you are talking about Sabbath school. I don't know, you put Sabbath school lessons on. All of you leaders are in the kitchen planning for guests. Is it a formality? Are we doing it for the sake of being a calm meaning? What is going on here? Say, look, meals are simple. And if you can't prepare it, I will teach and we shall prepare it. Come to the campsite. Say, no, no, the preacher cannot, we cannot prepare food. Say, all right, and what you're going to do, you are going to prepare the food in a short time period. Then I told them, my mother has seven children. How many children? How many guests do you have? Yet my mother has never asked for a congregation of women to help her cook for her children. Never went to the video saying, I have seven children. Can you gather and help me cook for them breakfast? She cooks it every day by herself. You won't cook, and the women who have had 10 children, some 12 children, some eight children here in Africa, it's common. And they all cook for these children alone. Why do you need 10 people in the kitchen at one time? My mother never been tired. And so in a camp meeting, it's messed up by these cooking people. Can't listen to the word of God. All right? And so, one of the, the women there said, that's right. And they began to go, began to go, began to go. The problem came in Sabbath. So on Sabbath, we said, we have to keep this up. And I say, prepare food salads, prepare some chapatis, prepare all these things, and they did. Unfortunately, when the people gathered for lunch, they opened the first pot, no flesh. 
Second one, more flesh. The third, they see vegetable salad. The fourth, they see fruits. They see Japan. Men were greatly disappointed. But I said in my heart, I said in my heart, let them be disappointed, but let them know that this is a standard God has given us. Now, I, I know a lot has gone in that campsite since I left there, but there is also much time in Indian cooking in preparation of rich pies and cakes and articles of food that do positive injury to those who partake of them. Should our sisters provide good bread and some other helpful kinds of food, both they and the families would be better prepared to appreciate the words of life and far more susceptible to the influence of the Holy Spirit. At later camp meetings, those in charge have educated, have been, have educated by practical, by practice as well as by precept. Know what? Has been furnished at the dining tent, but fruits, grains, and vegetables have been supplied in abundance. I think it's in this nearby town that I had a minister stood and pulled me divine now and say, no salmon today until you supply a chair. And the leaders to bring about and say, so that we don't waste time for the salmon, we need to get a chicken from, from the market. <laughs> and they did. And then one family said, we will not even prepare. Now God will love his faithful people, even in a man. As the visitors ask questions in regard to absence of meat, listen, if a guest asks you a question in regard to why is there no flesh or meat, the reason is plainly stated that flesh is not the most helpful food for your life. All right? Some persons bring upon the camp ground food that is entirely unsuitable to such occasion, rich cases of spice, and varieties of dishes that would derail the digestion of a healthy laboring man. Of course, the best is thought none too good for the, like that construction. <laughs> the best is thought none too good for the, how many of you understood that? The best is thought, none too good for the. Have you gone to a place and people think of you to do you the best? You've gone to marry, you've gone as a, I mean, anywhere, all right? They bring you the best food. They think like, we'll please Brother Felix by doing him this, but none is too good for you. So they are thinking that, hey, we went to a place with some of my brethren, they brought fish, they brought chicken, that group cooked, my friend. They thought they were doing the best, only to realize the preachers going over and taking the vegetable and then serving and leaving this, all these pots untouched. They thought the best, none was too good for us. And you know that night, those women spent time with us. They came with books where we were sleeping. They say, why did you eat the fish and the chicken and all this? You didn't take any of them. The one minister was taking, he wouldn't dare. But we told him, brother, you've been taking. So I don't know. If you want to take, that's OK. But as we are not going to do one, we take it. So the food went back as it was. It was a great disappointment. And sometimes we need to disappoint people when they are dis disregarding the laws of hell. And we are told, we are told the people send these things to his table and invite him to their tables. In this way, ministers attempted to eat what? Are you seeing? Temptation to eat too much comes with a lot of foods in one table. Why do you cook so many foods? One table, one meal. Why don't you ask the minister, do you eat this? Are you okay with this? Do you have an allergic reaction? All right, none of them do. This food that we prepare, they are all okay with it. All right? 
Let's prepare it in a sweet, palatable way. Serve one simple meal at the table. If there is someone who doesn't eat, supply for him something as an alternative, isn't it? Yeah, that's simple. Why do you need a table that is like, I mean, you call it buffet or whatever. All the foods in this world are in one table in one day. So this man wants to taste this, this, or taste this, taste this, taste this. And my dad was just sharing me an experience where they gave a minister who was actually new to, 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 to Lula, they told him, drink, drink this is very sweet. And he didn't know that what he was taking, like, what do you call that thing, in, 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 that thing that we wanted to put there? Peanut sauce. Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of it, and this guy didn't know. Then he had digestive problems. And now they want him to preach, he can't preach. He can't be, and he can't tell the people, I have a problem, I don't know whether it's what I did what. <laughs> what I drank. Because you had never taken that thing. Are you getting it? You are new in a place, you are introduced to something, everyone is urging you to what? To eat it. They are bringing temptations, they're saying, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. And you are also not having the what? The, uh, I mean, the, 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 to be a guard, to be able to tell them, thank you, I'm fine. And so <clears throat> these things lessen the efficiency of the camp meeting, all right? And he told me, my dad told me, that man was unable to preach. They kept asking him preach, and he kept telling them, please, do one more song. Do one more song. Do one more song. Until the service was over. Yeah. Now you can see the mess of wrong words. Oh, yes. Eating diet. The minister should decline. Should do what? I'm glad we didn't put this issue of health, but almost every minister has been mentioning it. That the minister should decline this well man, but unwise hospitality. Even at the risk of seeming what? Discourteous. And the people should have too much true kindness, uh, and the people should have too much true kindness to press such an alternative upon him. They err when they tempt the minister with unhelpful word. Food. Precious talent has thus been lost to the cause of God, and many, while they do live, are deprived of the vigor and the strength of their faculty. I don't want to be sick. I ask God by His grace that I can minister if Christ has not come until I am old beyond. I don't want to sit down because I'm sick with diabetes and blood pressure and all these diseases. Because I've eaten wrong, or because congregations have fed me with wrong food. I think if ministers come to our congregations as leaders, let us give them the best food. I used to tell people while I was in college that I want you to think about that minister. Because sometimes you say, I know you, brother Sami, that uh, you are in mission, isn't it? So you just eat what is in the mission. But I want you to think about it this way. He is going to another mission. And he's going to another mission. And he's going to another mission. And is going to another mission. And everyone is saying the same thing. You see now? So at the end of the day, two months in missions is not eaten right. Is it? It's not eaten right. Two months. Because for every meeting, the person thinks he's going back home. But that might not be the case, is it? He could be going to another one, and that person reasoning just like your reason. He says, these are actually injured, the ministers. And if you're kind enough, you should be able to give them something that will not deprive them of their vigor and strength of faculties. Ministers, above all others, should economize the strength of the brain and the nerve. They should avoid all foods or drink that has a tendency to irritate or excite the nerve. Excitement will be followed by depression or by indulgence, will cloud the mind and render thought difficult and confused. No man can become a successful workman in spiritual things until they observe strict temperance in the church. 
God cannot let his Holy Spirit rest upon those who, while they know how they should eat for health, persist in a course that will enfeeble mind and body. All right? And so I'm not going to read this because I know you've read it, but the time came when Sister White said that she will not attend any of our camp meetings, the general conference camp meetings, because of the way things were being done. Well, done. We, we, are, we are not in a meeting to discuss our issue of not attending those camp meetings. We are here to discuss how to conduct proper camp meetings. And so that's why you'll find those in the notes, but that's why I, I just want to... Practice, he says, I must remain away from conference meetings. I must not attend camp meetings. The spirit of growing apart as the result of judging one another has become so common. And the churches are becoming so living with the spirit that I have no desire to attend these meetings. So may the Lord himself help us as we continue to study his word together to know what we should do. Blessings. Let's pray. And then he has to Holy Father in heaven, you spent my time interacting with your word to know what the testimonies say in regard to come meetings. Lord, we confess that we've not followed the principles that are laid down. Even in our very own reform movements and band movements, within even the General Conference Church, all the people, Lord, have been messing up with what the testimonies say. Have mercy upon us. May our blessings be now upon us now and forevermore and teach us together that we may be able to not only hear but to do these things. We are prayed in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.